three generations on this farm and there's always been fencing and there will always be fencing. Uh, every year seems to be a new project or a new fence going in or a new idea. We live in Northern Ontario, so there's plenty of wind breaks all over. We make it a point to leave some trees and to make sure they can get out of the wind, especially in winter feeding. We're fortunate on this farm that all the fields are fenced, so we have options just about anywhere on about just about 800 acres to graze anywhere we want. So on this farm we have two sources of water. One is a drilled well in the center of our pasture and we pipe water to every paddock that has running water. In the spring we had surface water just about everywhere so um, it is pretty wet here in the spring there's no question. Two years ago, we bought a small beef herd of low-line Angus. Now I'm renting property as the, the, uh, the cattle business is sort of developing. The, the forest comes in as a, a natural windbreak, and I always keep, you know, the perimeter treed so it break up the wind. On this specific pasture, there's a uh, pond that we pump water out of to an elevated reservoir, which would then we would gravity feed to five different points on this pasture. For our system on the farm is, is pasture management, and that's the big component is fencing and water. Well, we're home, home raised here in Timmins, Ontario. We started off with limousine cattle, and we've moved forward to uh, grass-fed operation only with the. Uh, uh, facilities to, uh, to get out of the freezing rain and the, and the strong winds. A good cow should be able to bring in a calf every year. I've got the John Deere dealer knocking on my door, I've got the New Holland dealer, I've got the Massey dealer and the Heston dealer knocking on the door. Um, I've got two fuel companies competing for my fuel account. Those service providers are not moving here physically, but they're sending their people here to service us. 